starting a restoration project, you'll notice you have bright work on a vehicle, and that would be the stainless trim that's obviously around this 34 International grill shell, but after 80 years of wear and tear, you'll notice you'll have dings, dents, scratches, and gouges throughout the piece. And in order to bring it back to its original luster from the factory, it's going to require straightening, grinding, sanding, and polishing to bring it back. Now with the grill out of the way, we're going to start with rough straightening of your stainless trim. We got this eyebrow piece for a 57 DeSoto. Clearly see that there's some uh, damage in it. There's some also damage sticking out on the piece. And another dent over here. I like to wear gloves just because stainless edges are usually pretty sharp, like a razor. So you don't want to cut yourself up while you're trying to straighten it. I like to use the uh, table as a dolly a lot of the times. They do also offer specialty trim or jeweler's hammers is what they're sometimes called. Also trim anvils. But in this case, since it's a large flat piece, I'm just going to go ahead and use my standalone auto body hammer. You really want to take your time here with this. You don't want to overstretch the metal or make more damage in the piece. Since this is such lightweight material, it really doesn't take a lot of pressure to actually move the material. When you're straightening stainless, the easiest way to tell if you got the dent out is just by drawing a sight line across the piece of stainless. When it looks straight, you're usually really close. But the final determination of if you got the piece straight is when you start getting into the sanding and filing of it. So I just switched out the block on the vise for the center punch. All I'm trying to do is raise the little low spot I have. So just applying gentle pressure to the piece in the desired area, I could slowly bring up that low spot. Now with it at the desired uh, straightness I'm after, we're going to start with using a single cut file to determine how straight the piece actually is and if we do need to raise any lows or hammer down any highs that are still in the piece. As you can see, we still have one small low spot over here. So we're going to bring that back up.
Patience is key. You only get one piece of trim to work with. Now that I'm satisfied with the rough straightening of the piece, we're going to move on to final sanding and polishing of the piece. Now that we've roughly straightened the stainless trim, we're going to sand and smooth out all of our hammer and filing marks from the piece. Working with a relatively coarse grit, this is 80 grit on a sanding block. Just going to work in a 30 degree slide. and corresponding the other way, 30 degrees to the piece. Now we're done with the 80 grit. Your only goal with the sanding paper is not to grind the material down a lot because the material is already so thin. Your only goal here is to smooth it up. So you don't want to see any further grinding scratches. I'm done with the 80. I'm going to switch over to 180 now. And we're just going to slowly work our way down to 2000 grit before buffing. Older stainless steel usually has a higher nickel content. Since this came off of 57 DeSoto, it's a little bit less. Car manufacturers in that time were always trying to cheapen the materials as much as they could. So sometimes you'll notice cars from the 50s actually have rust on it. It's due to the lack of nickel content in the actual material. But it's not to say that it can't be sanded and polished right back up. A little bit finer grit, this is 400. Satisfied with the removing all the 80 grit scratches with this 400, we're gonna take out all the 180 grit scratches. You'll notice that the grit with the 400, since it's so much finer, tends to clog up and dull out a whole lot quicker. So be prepared to use a little more 400 grit to achieve your desired results. Now that I'm satisfied with smoothing it up with the 400 grit, all I'm gonna do is take the DA some 320 grit, a little bit rougher, but I'm just going to even out all the sanding hatches or sanding marks that you see in the piece with a DA swirl. So when I move on to wet sanding, I will be able to see any of the coarser grit scratches in the piece and focus my time on working those out.
Now I have an even finish, so I will be able to see any of the sanding scratches left by the DA, but now I'm going to move on to some 600 grit wet or dry paper. I already stuck my paper, pre-soaked it in the water. There's a couple drops of soap in here to help clean the surface of the wet sanding paper from clogging. And so the other reason for why you're wet sanding is wet sanding doesn't allow the material to clog the paper. Same as before, 30 degrees. Slide, cross hatch as you're trying to work out those DA swirl marks. Your only goal here is to continue the smooth up process, but with this older trim, I've discovered that you do need to take it all the way down to 2000 grit sanding paper to get a nice polish out of it. So again, very time consuming, but always worth the effort. Now that we've finished up with our 2000 grit, before this we worked with 1500 grit, 1000 grit, and 800 grit. Now all the sanding scratches and file marks are now out. We're going to move on to buffing. Just drying the surface here. When dealing with rotating objects or grinders, you always want to remember safety first, safety glasses. When it comes to buffing, I always like to wear a respirator. Also gloves, while you're buffing, you're always building heat in the part. So good thick pair of gloves, always a good choice. This is a buffing dresser, bunch of sharp teeth on it. This will clean the wheel from any other dirt, debris that was on it from anything else you were buffing. And there's two different types of wheels. You got your rough cut, which will be spiral wound, and you got your finish cut wheel. This is loose. This is what we're gonna use with the white rouge. This we're gonna use with the tri-poly compound to make our rough cut on the stainless. Now that we're done with the initial coarse cut, we're going to move to the fine cut. We're going to have to switch out the wheel for that.
Alls we're doing is getting the last little bits of buffing compound off the piece. As you can see, we've only done one section of this, but you can see the transformation from the beginning stages, rough out, filing. This is a section of original in our newly brightened uh, area that did have damage on it. All we're going to do now is finish it all up and put it on the car.